Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Cordexual here. Today, we're going to be talking about TDAR. TDAR is a completely free program to use. It does have a $5 subscription fee for just a little bit more features, such as having stats. Not these. These will show you. These stats will show for free. So TDAR is basically clean up your media libraries, health checks, files, save space, and so much more. So the main point of TDAR is to transcode your videos from H.264 to H.265, thus saving 50% in file size. Now, if you have um, a lot of media on your hard drive and you want to condense that and save space so you can have more space for future media, this will save you in hard drive space. So, for example, if you have a 4K or a 1080p video and it's 2 gigs, 20 gigs, whatever, right? This program will go ahead and condense that and you will not lose quality. I repeat, you will not lose quality because of the new format of the H.265 and so it will leave the quality as the same, but it will just convert it all. And so from 20 gigs down to 10 gigs and or from one gig down to 500 megabytes, what, whatever the case may be of whatever format quality it's in, it will just condense it. Now think about if you have a one terabyte hard drive, which is like what, 30, 50 bucks, you know, and I don't want to keep paying for hard drive space. I, I, I'm cheap, right? And I want to condense this as much as possible and, and you know, have more media. This will do it for you. And it comes with other features such as remove unwanted audio or subtitles in the video, in the streams in your video, remove messy title metadata, renames the file based on the codec and resolution, and it will run a health check for... Uh, for any corruption in your media files and uh, so on and so forth. The other important thing is if you have a GPU, this will work out faster in your favor and it has to be an NVIDIA GPU. If you are, it will not work with AMD. And if you just have a CPU, it still can, tra or if you only have a CPU, it still can transcode that CPU. It'll just take quite a bit longer, depending on how much media that you have that needs to convert. So this is a great free tool. And again, you can pay $5 a month, which, which ain't shit for me, to be honest. But for some people it is. And it gives you a little bit more data like an overall graph of of things so i've already downloaded it and i'm going to run it so as soon as you download it it will just be the tdar underscore updater and when you run it it'll pop up with a command prompt downloading everything and these are the content files that it'll download so we're going to run this as the server and we're going to get this set up it will automatically open up the uh, web UI to start configuring this. And that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and configure it, right? So we have the display and this is where things will get queued up as soon as you add your media library. And this will also shows what's being queued up down here as well. So you can search for the files there's the stats and how much space you have saved. I have saved quite a lot with this. Then the library. So here, let me go ahead and delete this and re-add it. Add library. Give it a name. And then it's going to scroll down. Make sure you click on source. And this is where it's going to ask where is the library at? And so it is under videos and that's where then under media, that's where all my, you know, content is at. Go ahead and put that in. Then you can also manually search for it and you're wondering, well, where were the files? It's only looking for the folder. So you're fine. Even though that the files are there and it doesn't show on here, 
It's just asking for the directory. Now, as here's a couple of options. So folder watch every time, let's just say in, in our previous video, we talked about sonar and radar and how it automatically downloads new media, right? And it puts it in the folder. Well, what folder watch does and also scan on start, you know, when you start it up, folder watch, it will, you know, it'll scan for any new files that has been added in this media and it'll automatically convert it as long as you have this running. So for me, I like to keep that, I like to have it automatically just automate on the fly. Now, as for the transcode cache, this is where you want to separate it in towards a temp folder. If you have the temp folder um, inside the media, it will put it in the loop. And so it'll transcode the stuff that's in the temp that's already trying to transcode. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it just makes sense if it does. So I like to keep the temp folder in towards a different directory. So let me go ahead and paste that in. We're going to go back, then the TDAR temp. Awesome. Now, as for the output folder, this is completely optional. I leave it as is. So under normal operations, TDAR is designed to work directly on your library, replacing original files so you don't have to touch these, you don't have to touch these options. You can enable a folder, the folder conversion below. Basically, in short words, it will just go ahead and it will convert that file and it'll also keep the original file it converted, but it'll also have a newly converted file. So yeah, but for me, I, I don't touch this because once it's converted, I just want it, the original file to be deleted and just keep the new converted file. The filters, this is the media that it will go ahead and look for and convert. If you do not see your format, you can just add a comma and just add whatever that's in, in this field. So transcode options. This is what we want to touch. So you will see the U, the, the PSU, right? If you only have, if you do not have a GPU, then leave this as is. If you do have a GPU, what you want to do is drag this above here because it'll do it in chronological order. Enable that. Hit close. There's no save button, so just hit close. And I don't want my CPU to be utilized for you. It's optional if you want to just powerhouse this through and use all resources. But for me, I'm not going to use my CPU. And so it'll just uh, run this in this order. And now if you want to add like certain plugins, there's these actions, community. So for example, subs, if you want to remove subs, let me hit enter. If you want to remove subs, that's an option, clean subtitle streams and so on and so forth. You can look for certain plugins and you can just add it on here towards this tree branch. Health check for a quick, simple health check. When it'll scan for any corrupted media files, it will only use the CPU and for thorough, it will use the GPU and CPU. So basically the health check will scan for any corrupted files. As for a scheduler, if you work like a nine to five on your computer, you know, just, just, you know, edit, uncheck these out, then do your thing. Then it will correlate within the hours that you specify to start transcoding. For me, as soon as I get the media file, I just want it done. Just get it out of my way. So then you can, that's it for that. You can also add more media and give it a name, do the same thing. And uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and delete that. Delete library. Yes. So what's next? You hit options you do a scan fresh, then it will take some time and it'll scan through all of the media files. Then before we queue it all up, actually, before we do any of this, we actually got to work on our nodes. So my bad. 
as for setting up a node, meaning we this right here is just the server. The server will communicate with the nodes and you can have local nodes and you can have remote nodes that's on your local network. Or if you do have the upload speed, such as fiber internet and port forward everything and know what you're doing, even setting up an SMB server, you can also do that as well and use other computers as nodes to help convert and condense this even further. I have mine set up like that. I have uh, six GPUs, probably a little bit more than that, eight, 10. I don't know how many GPUs I got, too damn many. So I have multiple computers that are picking up the slack and transcoding these media files on the fly and just get it done and over with. I had a lot of media and it took me four or five days to complete it all. Now that's with the help of multiple GPUs on different computers that are connected on the same network, just attacking this and converting it. Right. I shouldn't say attacking it, but it's, you know, it's, it's helping out. So let's go ahead and set up our node. So under the TDAR node, then uh, right here, here's the executable X application, and you'll go ahead and run it. You can make modifications by assigning it a name. These files will not be here if you do not run the program. As soon as you run it, these files will be here. So you can go ahead and open up Notepad. And when you're running on a local machine like this, especially with the server and the node together, you do not have to make any modifications. You can just leave the name as is or change the name right here so you can identify which computer is working on which. And if you're, again, working on a re um, from a different computer and want to remote in on this, then give it a name, give it an IP address, and this is where you need to set up some SMB servers, if it's on Windows or what have you, and start giving it a path. And I'll go over this just briefly at the end of the video. But for now, we're just working on just one computer. So we have this running. And we go back to TDAR. Right here, here's oblong.aux, dash aux. And as you can see, it's running on the same machine. What I want to do is hit options, scroll down, and allow GPU workers to do CPU tasks. If you don't have that enabled, enable it, especially if you have a GPU. Then below here, I have my CPU set at zero, so it will not transcode any files on my CPU. And as for a health check, again, with the CPU set to zero. As for... The GPU, I set that as three. That's the sweet spot. Even though that my NVIDIA graphics card is unlocked, there's no benefit of adding more than three because it will just, it depends on the bandwidth on your, on your hard drive, on your network, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Then as for a health check, again, it'll just scan for any corrupted files in the media folder and uh, yeah so i just set it out to three you can play around with this as want if you want maybe set up to five six seven eight nine ten whatever works for you but for me the sweet spot is three now once we go back towards uh, once you set that all up we're going to go back towards our library and under media now we can do a scan fresh and it'll take some time to scan through the media folders or the folders in the media, whatever. After that, once it's done, requeue all items transcode. Then that's the next option that you click on. Then it'll start hammering these files away and converting them, and it'll start saving you space. It can take some time depending how big your media folder is. So keep that in mind. It can if it's a small amount, like maybe, I don't know, 100 gigs, you know, maybe less than a day. If it's terabytes, all right, you're, you're going to be in for it, bro. And let's go over some other stuff. It'll show under stats. It will show you how many files it's converted, the numbers of transcode, 
space saved and numbers of health checks. So, and right here, it'll give you the status. If you scroll down, if you want to get pro and get the the data, the graphical data right here, then it's just five bucks a month. You don't have to use this. For me, I just pay five bucks a month. Again, it's five bucks ain't shit to me and it's supporting the developers. Let's see what else. If you want to set up Discord notifications for what nodes being connected, disconnected, transcode success, so on and so forth. You can have that option. Report viewer. Plugins. The uh, This is where you put your uh, TDR key, if you have one. Logs, it will display the same output from your console, from this console, right? help if you need any backup to make backups so yeah that's that's basically it if you want to learn how to remote in from a different computer on the same network or even on a different you know outside of your network then continue watching this video other than that you are done you're golden you're good to go but uh, yeah, for those who are staying for the remote for the remote part process, then continue on watching. All right, so let's just say you have two Windows machines, or one is a Windows server and one is a Linux server, whatever the case is, right? What we want to do is set up a SMB file sharing system. If you don't know how to do that, or this is too confusing, pause the video and look up another tutorial of how to enable SMB, but I'll show you how to do that in this video. Just don't come to me like, oh, it's not working. Even if it's in the comments or on the other social media, I won't help you with this part. This is all on your own. So let's go ahead and share our network. What we want to do is go towards the where our media is at, and I want to share the entire video folder. Right click, properties, then this is where my media folder is at. Yours will be in a different location, so find your folder. Go to sharings tab, then go to advanced sharing, then permissions, then you're gonna add your account user. This will require for, for you to have the, your account must have a password. If you're, when you log into your, when you start up your computer and just starts up into the desktop automatically without you, uh, without the password, you will need to require a password for this one. You can also add a user and uh, add a user, a different user and have a password for that. But this will require you to put a password on your local Windows account. So we're gonna add, let's go ahead and just remove this and re-add it and you're probably wondering what's 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 my name what you can do is go to cmd type in who am i and well i am codexual so that's the name of my user account so i'll just go ahead and add codexual run a name check and it will automatically populate with the computer name as well if it doesn't populate with that username or whatever make sure that you add that user so you're going to hit okay then we're going to allow full control hit apply hit okay hit apply again hit okay then for password protection people must have a user account and password for this to access the shared folders we have already said that multiple times but what you want to do is click on that blue link where it says network and sharing center and go to private and turn on network discovery. And you can even have printers turn on file and printing sharing. If it, if you're having problems of not connecting remotely on towards the server computer, on the server computer where we're currently at, just enable everything. So, but the private is what's important, the private profile. You know, when you first plug in the, uh, When you go visit a friend's house and you plug in your Ethernet cord or you connect to their Wi-Fi and it says, oh, 
on the on the right side of the screen a blue bar will will appear it'll say oh is this a private is it public do you trust this blah 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 and you just go through that if you click public this will fit with a public or if you hit private it will correlate with this private category if you hit public it will correlate with this public profile so that's something that you should keep in mind of now, once we have our network configured, go ahead and reboot the computer. This is highly important. Once it's done rebooted, come back to this video. So now, let me open up a new notepad. We want to get this computer path. Now, it can be the name of the computer or it could be the IP address. If if when you're trying to connect to the name of a computer and it doesn't work, get the IP address of the computer, which will open up command prompt, then IP config, then it'll show what your IP address is. So for example, we'll just do 192.168.69.69, just as an example. And then you're gonna open this, or you're gonna copy this, you're gonna go towards this PC, right? And you're going to right click on this PC on the sidebar and you're going to click on map network drive. What this will do is it will emulate something that likes something that will look like this as if you just bought a new hard drive, but it will emulate it remotely from that drive as if you were connected and setting this up on the client side. So this this assumes that you're now on the client side of the PC, not on the server side. So on the client side, map network drive. Then you're gonna give it a drive name. I'm gonna go with Y, like why are you doing this to me? And then you're gonna hit next or hit finish. And it'll ask for you to sign in. Again, this IP address is false but it'll ask you to sign in, which is codextual and whatever the password for that user account, then, then finish. Then it will populate right here. And you can do this again for the temp folder, but since the temp folder, the question is, now we're on the server side, no longer on the client side. Okay, so we have access towards the media and inside the media folder is our media content files. And we also have access towards the TDAR. So if the if this is separated on towards a different hard drive or a different location, then you're going to have to do the same process on the server side and make sure that you are sharing that. So let's get to that. Let me go ahead and close out of this and open up our config folder where our config node is at. All right, so what you wanna do is, I'm gonna copy down right here down for reference. What you wanna do is get the IP address of that server, so 192.1, 68.69.69, give it a name. I'll just leave it as is. And this is where we're gonna make modifications. So we're connecting from a Windows client to a Windows server. And on that Windows server, we need to match whatever location that this is at. Even though that we're on the Windows client, it if we were to, Let's just say, for example, on the Windows client, we do not have this created, right? We're connecting towards another computer and we're trying to get access towards these files. So what you want to do is get the full link, which is right here, get the full URL of from the wind from the server windows side, paste that right here. And you're gonna replace the backslash with a forward slash. Then as for the node, you're just gonna type in the 
the map that we have, uh, the network map letter drive that we assigned it, which was the letter Y. So capital Y. So like that. So now we have access towards this when we're running the node. So if the temp folder is in a different location, copy this. So open bracket, server, node, close bracket, add a, copy this, then add a comma, hit enter. Do not have a comma after this, unless if you're gonna add multiple paths. So if it's gonna, if you're gonna have multiple paths, whenever you're done reaching the end path, whatever end, once you're done finishing, make sure that the last bracket or snippet of code that you have is not closed off with a comma. So it'll look something like this, right? But however, we're just setting up two paths. So we want this to gain access towards the temp folder that we have created, which will be users, videos, right here. So let me go ahead and copy this. And put that right there. And again, with forward slash. So this assumes that the temp TDAR temp folder is in a different directory. But since it's in the same directory as the videos, we don't really need to set this up. But that's, for example, if you have the temp folder that's not in the same directory as videos. Then remove that, save it, then go ahead and run it, which will be the TDAR folder, then the node, then the node right here. Then you will see it populate right here with the second node or the connecting computer client. And then you got to make modifications to that tab or tab into the oblong options allow GPU, how many you want to transcode, health check, and it'll start doing its thing. If you're having problems of setting it up, please visit the wiki or just, just Google for answers. Just Google for answers. That is how you set it up. If you, if you can't connect remotely, you know, port forward. And if, if you still can't connect, even if it's on a local machine, we don't have to worry about this because don't worry about the stuff at the bottom. Just remove that. But now you can save it, then run it. What was I saying? Firewall. Go to your firewall. Then Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. Then we're going to add an inbound rule. And we're going to do the same with outbound. So our inbound, so from client to server, we want to get, we want to port forward this, right? And that's what we're trying to connect to. So new rule, port, next, then TCP, give it the port number, give it a name, TCP. Then do the same thing, but for UDP. So right here, UDP. UDP, then add the same for outbound rules. Once you set up an outbound rule before, like you just read this through because this will, what this is what's going to throw you off. So TCP port number, then it'll automatically have it on block the connection. We don't want that. We want to allow it. Next, next. TCP. Then add UDP. As for the outbound port, allow UDP. That's how you set up 
port forwarding on a local machine. And if you're trying to do it from remotely, then you're going to have to port forward from your router. So that is it. Now you have multiple computers connected towards your Windows server and able to tackle your media and do it at a faster pace, right? That is it. That is it. That is it. If you guys like this video, like, share, comment, subscribe. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. Thank you for sticking around. Please feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow my social media. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon or send in a donation of any amount with PayPal. It really helps out with post-production, equipment, food in my belly, and also continue making free content for you guys. Links in the description. Y'all take care, and thank you once again.